The countries around Chaldea Chaldea and neighboring countries Chaldea was a small country that existed between the late 10th or early 9th and mid-6th centuries BCE. After which the country and its people were absorbed and assimilated into the indigenous population Babylonia. Semitic speaking, it was located in the marshy land of the far southeastern corner of Mesopotamia and briefly came to rule Babylon. The Hebrew Bible uses the term and this is translated as Chaldeans in the Greek Old Testament, although there is some dispute as to whether Kazdim in fact means Chaldean or refers to the South Mesopotamian Kaldu. During a period of weakness in the East Semitic-speaking Kingdom of Babylonia, new tribes of West Semitic-speaking migrants arrived in the region from the Levant between the 11th and 9th centuries BCE. The earliest waves consisted of Sudians and Aramaeans. Followed a century or so later by the Kaldu, a group who became known later as the Chaldeans or the Chaldees. These migrations did not affect the powerful kingdom and empire of Assyria in northern Mesopotamia, which repelled these incursions. These nomadic Chaldeans settled in the far southeastern portion of Babylonia, chiefly on the left bank of the Euphrates. Though for a short time the name commonly referred to the whole of southern Mesopotamia in Hebraic literature, this was a geographical and historical Misnomer as Chaldea proper was in fact only the plain in the far southeast formed by the deposits of the Euphrates and the Tigris. Extending about 640 kilometers along the course of these rivers and averaging about 160 kilometers in width. There were several kings of Chaldean origins who ruled Babylonia. From 626 BC to 539 BC, a ruling family referred to as the Chaldean dynasty, named after their possible Chaldean origin ruled the kingdom at its height under the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Although the final ruler of this empire, Nabonidus was a usurper of Assyrian ancestry. The name Chaldea is a Latinization of the Greek Chaldea, a Hellenization of Akkadian Mat Kaldu or Kostu. The name appears in Hebrew in the Bible as Kazdim and in Aramaic as Kaldo. The Hebrew word possibly appears in the Bible in the name Kest, the singular form of Kazdim, meaning Chaldeans. Kest is identified as son of Abraham's brother Nahor, residing in Aram Nairium. Jewish historian Flavius Josephus also links Arphaxad and Chaldea, in his Antiquities of the Jews, stating, Arphaxad. Named the Arphaxadites, who are now called Chaldeans. In the early period, between the early 9th century and late 7th century BCE. Mat Kaldi was the name of a small sporadically independent migrant founded territory under the domination of the Neo Assyrian Empire in southeastern Babylonia, extending to the western shores of the Persian Gulf. The expression Mat Bit Yakin is also used, apparently synonymously. Bit Yakin was the name of the largest and most powerful of the five tribes of the Chaldeans, or equivalently, their territory. The original extension of Bit Yakin is not known precisely, but it extended from the lower Tigris into the Arabian Peninsula. Sargon II mentions it as extending as far as Dilmun or Sealand. Chaldea or Mat Kaldi generally referred to the low, marshy, alluvial land around the estuaries of the Tigris and Euphrates, which at the time discharged their waters through separate mouths into the sea. The tribal capital Dor Yakin was the original seat of Marduk Baladan. The king of Chaldea was also called the king of Bit Yakin, just as the kings of Babylonia and Assyria were regularly styled simply king of Babylon or Asur the capital city in each case. In the same way, what is now known as the Persian Gulf was sometimes called the Sea of Bit Yakin, and sometimes the Sea of the Land of Chaldea. Chaldea came to be used in a wider sense, of Mesopotamia in general, following the ascendancy of the Chaldeans during 608-557 BCE. This is especially the case in the Hebrew Bible, which was substantially composed during this period. The Book of Jeremiah makes frequent reference to the Chaldeans' Kassites. Book of Habakkuk 1 6 calls them that bitter and hasty nation. Book of Isaiah 23 13 DRB states, Behold the land of the Chaldeans, there was not such a people, the Assyrian founded it, they have led away the strong ones thereof into captivity, they have destroyed the houses. Thereof, they have brought it to ruin. Unlike the East Semitic Akkadian speaking Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians, whose ancestors had been established in Mesopotamia since at least the 30th century BCE. The Chaldeans were not a native Mesopotamian people, but were late 10th or early 9th century BCE West Semitic Levantine migrants to the southeastern corner of the region, who had played no part in the previous 3,000 years or so of Sumero-Akkadian and Assyro-Babylonian Mesopotamian civilization and history. The ancient Chaldeans seemed to have migrated into Mesopotamia sometime between c. 
940 to 860 BCE, a century or so after other new Semitic arrivals, the Aramaeans and the Sudians appeared in Babylonia, c. 1100 BCE. They first appear in written record in the annals of the Assyrian king Shalmaneser III during the 850s BCE. This was a period of weakness in Babylonia and its ineffectual native kings were unable to prevent new waves of semi-nomadic foreign peoples from invading and settling in the land. Though belonging to the same West Semitic-speaking ethnic group and migrating from the same Levantine regions as the earlier arriving Arameans, they are to be differentiated. The Assyrian king Sennacherib, for example, carefully distinguishes them in his inscriptions. The Chaldeans were able to keep their identity despite the dominant Assyro-Babylonian culture although some were not able to, as was the case for the earlier Amorites, Kassites and Sudians before them by the time Babylon fell in 539 BCE. In the Hebrew Bible, the prophet Abraham is stated to have originally come from Yor of the Chaldees. Ancient Chaldeans originally spoke a West Semitic language similar to ancient Aramaic language. During the Neo-Assyrian Empire, the Assyrian king Tiglath-Pileser III introduced an Eastern Aramaic dialect as the lingua franca of his empire in the mid-8th century BCE. As a result of this innovation, in late periods both the Babylonian and Assyrian dialects of Akkadian became marginalized, and Mesopotamian Aramaic took its place across Mesopotamia, including among the Chaldeans. One form of this once widespread Aramaic language was used in some books of the Hebrew Bible. The use of the name Chaldean to describe it, first introduced by Jerome of Stridon, became common in early Aramaic studies, but that misnomer was later corrected. When modern scholars concluded that the Aramaic dialect used in the Hebrew Bible was not related with the ancient Chaldeans and their language. The region that the Chaldeans eventually made their homeland was in relatively poor southeastern Mesopotamia, at the head of the Persian Gulf. They appear to have migrated into southern Babylonia from the Levant at some unknown point between the end of the reign of Ninurta Kudur Usher II circa 940 BCE, and the start of the reign of Marduk Zakir Shumi I in 855 BCE although there is no historical proof of their existence prior to the late 850s BCE, for perhaps a century or so after settling in the area. These semi-nomadic migrant Chaldean tribes had no impact on the pages of history, seemingly remaining subjugated by the native Akkadian-speaking kings of Babylon or by perhaps regionally influential Aramean tribes. The main players in southern Mesopotamia during this period were Babylonia and Assyria, together with Elam to the east and the Arameans, who had already settled in the region a century or so prior to the arrival of the Chaldeans. The very first written historical attestation of the existence of Chaldeans occurs in 852 BCE, in the annals of the Assyrian king Shalmaneser III, who mentions invading the southeastern extremes of Babylonia and subjugating one Mushalim Marduk. The chief of the Amukani tribe and overall leader of the Kaldu tribes, together with capturing the town of Bakani, extracting tribute from Adini, chief of the Bet Dakuri, another Chaldean tribe. Shalmaneser III had invaded Babylonia at the request of its own king, Marduk Sakir Shumi'i, who, being threatened by his own rebellious relations, together with powerful Aramean tribes pleaded with the more powerful Assyrian king for help. The subjugation of the Chaldean tribes by the Assyrian king appears to have been an aside, as they were not at that time a powerful force or a threat to the native Babylonian king. Important Kaldu regions in southeastern Babylonia were Bit Yakin, Bet Dakuri, Bet Adini, Bet Amukani, and Bet Shalani. Chaldean leaders had by this time already adopted Assyro Babylonian names, religion, language, and customs, indicating that they had become Akkadianized to a great degree. The Chaldeans remained quietly ruled by the native Babylonians for the next 72 years, only coming to historical prominence for the first time in Babylonia in 780 BCE when a previously unknown Chaldean named Marduk Apply Usher usurped the throne from the native Babylonian king Marduk Belzeri. The latter was a vassal of the Assyrian king Shalmaneser IV, who was otherwise occupied quelling a civil war in Assyria at the time. This was to set a precedent for all future Chaldean aspirations on Babylon during the Neo-Assyrian Empire, always too weak to confront. A strong Assyria alone and directly, the Chaldeans awaited periods when Assyrian kings were distracted elsewhere in their vast empire. Or engaged in internal conflicts, then, in alliance with other powers stronger than themselves, they made a bid for control over Babylonia. Shalmaneser IV attacked and defeated Marduk Apply User, retaking northern Babylonia and forcing on him a border treaty in Assyria's favor. The Assyrians allowed him to remain on the throne, 
although subject to Assyria. Eriba Marduk, another Chaldean, succeeded him in 769 BCE and his son, Nabushuma Ishkun in 761 BCE, with both being dominated by the new Assyrian king Ashurdan III. Babylonia appears to have been in a state of chaos during this time, with the north occupied by Assyria, its throne occupied by foreign Chaldeans, and continual civil unrest throughout the land. The Chaldean rule proved short-lived. A native Babylonian king named Nabonassar defeated and overthrew the Chaldean usurpers in 748 BCE, restored indigenous rule, and successfully stabilized Babylonia. The Chaldeans once more faded into obscurity for the next three decades. During this time both the Babylonians and the Chaldean and Aramean migrant groups who had settled in the land once more fell completely under the yoke of the powerful Assyrian king Tiglath-Pileser III. A ruler who introduced imperial Aramaic as the lingua franca of his empire. The Assyrian king at first made Nabonassar and his successor native Babylonian kings Nabu Nadanzeri, Nabu Suma Yukin II and Nabu Mukinzeri his subjects. But decided to rule Babylonia directly from 729 BCE. He was followed by Shalmaneser V, who also ruled Babylon in person. When Sargon II ascended the throne of the Assyrian Empire in 722 BCE after the death of Shalmaneser V, he was forced to launch a major campaign in his subject states of Persia. Mania and Media in ancient Iran to defend his territories there. He defeated and drove out the Scythians and Sumerians who had attacked Assyria's Persian and Median vassal colonies in the region. At the same time, Egypt began encouraging and supporting the rebellion against Assyria in Israel and Canaan, forcing the Assyrians to send troops to deal with the Egyptians. These events allowed the Chaldeans to once more attempt to assert themselves. While the Assyrian king was otherwise occupied defending his Iranian colonies from the Scythians and Sumerians and driving the Egyptians from Canaan. Marduk Aplat Idina II of Bit Yakin, allied himself with the powerful Elamite kingdom and the native Babylonians. Briefly seizing control of Babylon between 721 and 710 BCE. With the Scythians and Sumerians vanquished, the Medes and Persians pledging loyalty. And the Egyptians defeated and ejected from southern Canaan, Sargon II was free at last to deal with the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, and Elamites. He attacked and deposed Marduk Apply II in 710 BCE, also defeating his Elamite allies in the process. After defeat by the Assyrians, Meridach Baladan fled to his protectors in Elam in 703. Meridach Baladan very briefly regained the throne from a native Akkadian Babylonian ruler Marduk Zakir Shumi II, who was a puppet of the new Assyrian king, Sennacherib. He was once more soundly defeated at Kish, and once again fled to Elam where he died in exile after one final failed attempt to raise a revolt against Assyria in 700 BCE, this time not in Babylon, but in the Chaldean tribal land of Bitjakin. A native Babylonian king named Bel-Ibni was placed on the throne as a puppet of Assyria. The next challenge to Assyrian domination came from the Elamites in 694 BCE, with Nergal Ashazib deposing and murdering Ashurnad and Shumi, the Assyrian prince who was king of Babylon and son of Sennacherib. The Chaldeans and Babylonians again allied with their more powerful Elamite neighbors in this endeavor. This prompted the enraged Assyrian king Sennacherib to invade and subjugate Elam and Chaldea and to sack Babylon, laying waste to and largely destroying the city. Babylon was regarded as a sacred city by all Mesopotamians, including the Assyrians, and this act eventually resulted in Sennacherib's being murdered by his own sons while he was praying to the goddess Rock in Nineveh. Esarhaddon succeeded Sennacherib as ruler of the Assyrian Empire. He completely rebuilt Babylon and brought peace to the region. He conquered Egypt, Nubia and Libya and entrenched his mastery over the Persians, Medes, Parthians, Scythians, Sumerians, Aramaeans, Israelites, Phoenicians, Canaanites, Urartians, Pontic Greeks, Cilicians, Phrygians, Lydians, Manians, and Arabs. For the next sixty or so years, Babylon and Chaldea remained peacefully under direct Assyrian control. The Chaldeans remained subjugated and quiet during this period, and the next major revolt in Babylon against the Assyrian Empire was fermented not by a Chaldean, Babylonian or Elamite. But by Shama Shamukin, who was an Assyrian king of Babylon, an elder brother of Ashurbanipal, the new ruler of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Shama Shamukin had become infused with Babylonian nationalism after 16 years peacefully subject to his brother and despite being Assyrian himself, declared that the city of Babylon and not Nineveh or Asher should be the seat of the empire. In 652 BCE, 
he raised a powerful coalition of peoples resentful of their subjugation to Assyria against his own brother Ashurbanipal. The alliance included the Babylonians, Persians, Chaldeans, Medes, Elamites, Sultans, Aramaeans, Israelites, Arabs, and Canaanites, together with some disaffected elements among the Assyrians themselves. After a bitter struggle lasting five years, the Assyrian king triumphed over his rebellious brother in 648 BCE, Elam was utterly destroyed, and the Babylonians, Persians, Medes, Chaldeans, Arabs, and others were savagely punished. An Assyrian governor named Kandalanu was then placed on the throne of Babylon to rule on behalf of Ashurbanipal. The next 22 years were peaceful, and neither the Babylonians nor Chaldeans posed a threat to the dominance of Ashurbanipal. However, after the death of the mighty Ashurbanipal in 627 BCE, the Neo-Assyrian Empire descended into a series of bitter internal dynastic civil wars that were to be the cause of its downfall. Ashurbanipal Ilani ascended to the throne of the empire in 626 BCE but was immediately engulfed in a torrent of fierce rebellions instigated by rival claimants. He was deposed in 623 BCE by an Assyrian general named Sin Shumulishar, who was also declared king of Babylon. Sinshar Ishkun, the brother of Ashurbanipal Ilani, took back the throne of empire from Sin Shumulishar in 622 BCE, but was then himself faced with unremitting rebellion against his rule by his own people. Continual conflict among the Assyrians led to a myriad of subject peoples, from Cyprus to Persia and the Caucasus to Egypt, quietly reasserting their independence and ceasing to pay tribute to Assyria. Nabopolassar, a previously obscure and unknown Chaldean chieftain, followed the opportunistic tactics laid down by previous Chaldean leaders to take advantage of the chaos and anarchy gripping Assyria and Babylonia and seized the city of Babylon in 620 BCE with the help of its native Babylonian inhabitants. Sinshar Ishkun amassed a powerful army and marched into Babylon to regain control of the region. Nabopolassar was saved from likely destruction because yet another massive Assyrian rebellion broke out in Assyria proper, including the capital Nineveh, which forced the Assyrian king to turn back in order to quell the revolt. Nabopolassar took advantage of this situation, seizing the ancient city of Nippur in 619 BCE, a mainstay of pro-Assyrianism in Babylonia, and thus Babylonia as a whole. However, his position was still far from secure, and bitter fighting continued in the Babylonian heartlands from 620 to 615 BCE, with Assyrian forces encamped in Babylonia in an attempt to eject Nabopolassar. Nabopolassar attempted a counterattack, marched his army into Assyria proper in 616 BCE, and tried to besiege Assur and Arifa, but was defeated by Sin Shar Ishkun and chased back into Babylonia after being driven from Itiklat at the southernmost end of Assyria. A stalemate seemed to have ensued, with Nabopolassar unable to make any inroads into Assyria despite its greatly weakened state, and Sinshar Ishkun unable to eject Nabopolassar from Babylonia due to constant rebellions and civil war among his own people. Nabopolassar's position, and the fate of the Assyrian Empire, was sealed when he entered into an alliance with another of Assyria's former vassals, the Medes, the now dominant people of what was to become Persia. The Median Syaxares had also recently taken advantage of the anarchy in the Assyrian Empire, while officially still a vassal of Assyria, he took the opportunity to meld the Iranian peoples, the Medes, Persians, Sagartians, and Parthians, into a large and powerful Median-dominated force. The Medes, Persians, Parthians, Chaldeans and Babylonians formed an alliance that also included the Scythians and Sumerians to the north. While Sin Shar Ishkun was fighting both the rebels in Assyria and the Chaldeans and Babylonians in southern Mesopotamia, Syaxares, hitherto a vassal of Assyria, in alliance with the Scythians and Sumerians, launched a surprise attack on civil war beleaguered Assyria in 615 BCE, sacking Kalhu and taking Arabka. Nabopolassar, still pinned down in southern Mesopotamia, was not involved in this major breakthrough against Assyria. From this point, however, the alliance of Medes, Persians, Chaldeans, Babylonians, Sagartians, Scythians and Sumerians fought in unison against Assyria. Despite the sorely depleted state of Assyria, bitter fighting ensued. Throughout 614 BCE the alliance of powers continued to make inroads into Assyria itself, although in 613 BCE the Assyrians somehow rallied to score a number of counter-attacking victories over the Medes-Persians, Babylonians Chaldeans and Scythian Sumerians. This led to a coalition of forces ranged against it to unite and launch a massive combined attack in 612 BCE, 
finally besieging and sacking Nineveh in late 612 BCE, killing Sin Shar Ishkun in the process. A new Assyrian king, Ashurubalit II, took the crown amidst the house to house fighting in Nineveh, and refused a request to bow in vassalage to the rulers of the alliance. He managed to fight his way out of Nineveh and reached the northern Assyrian city of Haran, where he founded a new capital. Assyria resisted for another seven years until 605 BCE, when the remnants of the Assyrian army and the army of the Egyptians, whose 26th dynasty had formed a brief allied coalition with the Assyrians, were defeated at Carchemish. Nabopolassar and his Median, Scythian and Sumerian allies were now in possession of much of the huge Neo-Assyrian Empire. The Egyptians had belatedly come to the aid of Assyria, which they would have hoped to support as a secure buffer between Egypt and the new powers of Babylon, Medes, and Persians, having already been raided by the Scythians. The Chaldean king of Babylon now ruled all of southern Mesopotamia, and the former Assyrian possessions of Aram, Phoenicia. Israel, Cyprus, Edom, Philistia, and parts of Arabia, while the Medes took control of the former Assyrian colonies in ancient Iran, Asia Minor and the Caucasus. Nabopolassar was not able to enjoy his success for long, dying in 604 BCE only one year after the victory at Carchemish. He was succeeded by his son, who took the name Nebuchadnezzar II, after the unrelated 12th century BCE native Akkadian Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar I. Indicating the extent to which the migrant Chaldeans had become infused with native Mesopotamian culture. Nebuchadnezzar II and his allies may well have been forced to deal with remnants of Assyrian resistance based in and around dur Kotlamu, as Assyrian imperial records continue to be dated in this region between 604 and 599 BCE. In addition, the Egyptians remained in the region in an attempt to revive the Asian colonies of the ancient Egyptian Empire. Nebuchadnezzar II was to prove himself to be the greatest of the Chaldean rulers, rivaling another non-native ruler, the 18th century BCE Amorite king Hammurabi, as the greatest king of Babylon. He was a patron of the cities and a spectacular builder, rebuilding all of Babylonia's major cities on a lavish scale. His building activity at Babylon, expanding on the earlier major and impressive rebuilding of the Assyrian king Esarhaddon, helped to turn it into the immense and beautiful city of legend. Babylon covered more than 8 square kilometers, surrounded by moats and ringed by a double circuit of walls. The Euphrates flowed through the center of the city, spanned by a beautiful stone bridge. At the center of the city rose the giant ziggurat called Etemenanki, house of the frontier between heaven and earth, which lay next to the temple of Marduk. He is also believed by many historians to have built the hanging gardens of Babylon for his wife. A Median princess from the Green Mountains so that she would feel at home. A capable leader, Nebuchadnezzar II conducted successful military campaigns, cities like Tyre, Sidon and Damascus were subjugated. He also conducted numerous campaigns in Asia Minor against the Scythians, Sumerians, and Lydians. Like their Assyrian relations, the Babylonians had to campaign yearly in order to control their colonies. In 601 BCE, Nebuchadnezzar II was involved in a major but inconclusive battle against the Egyptians. In 599 BCE, he invaded Arabia and routed the Arabs at Kedar. In 597 BCE, he invaded Judah, captured Jerusalem, and deposed its king Jehoiakim. Egyptian and Babylonian armies fought each other for control of the Near East throughout much of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, and this encouraged King Zedekiah of Judah to revolt. After an 18-month siege, Jerusalem was captured in 587 BCE, thousands of Jews were deported to Babylon, and Solomon's temple was razed to the ground. Nebuchadnezzar successfully fought the pharaoh Semeticus II and Apreus throughout his reign, and during the reign of Pharaoh Amasis in 568 BCE it is rumored that he may have briefly invaded Egypt itself. By 572, Nebuchadnezzar was in full control of Babylonia, Chaldea, Aramea, Phoenicia, Israel, Judah, Philistia, Samara, Jordan, Northern Arabia, and parts of Asia Minor. Nebuchadnezzar died of illness in 562 BCE after a one-year co-reign with his son, Amel Marduk, who was deposed in 560 BCE after a reign of only two years. Nereglasar succeeded Amel Marduk. It is unclear as to whether he was in fact an ethnic Chaldean or a native Babylonian nobleman, as he was not related by blood to Nabopolassar's descendants, having married into the ruling family. He conducted successful military campaigns against the Hellenic inhabitants of Cilicia, which had threatened Babylonian interests. 
Naraglasar reigned for only four years and was succeeded by the youthful Labashi Marduk in 556 BCE. Again, it is unclear whether he was a Chaldean or a native Babylonian. Labashi Marduk reigned only for a matter of months, being deposed by Nabonidus in late 556 BCE. Nabonidus was certainly not a Chaldean. But an Assyrian from Haran, the last capital of Assyria, and proved to be the final native Mesopotamian king of Babylon. He and his son, the regent Belshazzar, were deposed by the Persians under Cyrus the Great in 539 BCE. When the Babylonian Empire was absorbed into the Persian Achaemenid Empire, the name Chaldean lost its meaning in reference to a particular ethnicity or land. But lingered for a while as a term solely and explicitly used to describe a societal class of astrologers and astronomers in southern Mesopotamia. The original Chaldean tribe had long ago became Akkadianized, adopting Akkadian culture, religion, language and customs, blending into the majority native population, and eventually wholly disappearing as a distinct race of people. As had been the case with other preceding migrant peoples, such as the Amorites, Kassites, Sudians and Aramaeans of Babylonia. The Persians considered this Chaldean societal class to be masters of reading and writing, and especially versed in all forms of incantation, sorcery, witchcraft, and the magical arts. They spoke of astrologists and astronomers as Chaldeans, and it is used with this specific meaning in the Book of Daniel and by classical writers, such as Strabo. The disappearance of the Chaldeans as an ethnicity in Chaldea as a land is evidenced by the fact that the Persian rulers of the Achaemenid Empire did not retain a province called Chaldea. Nor did they refer to Chaldeans as a race of people in their written annals. This is in contrast to Assyria, and for a time Babylonia also, where the Persians retained the names Assyria and Babylonia as designations for distinct geopolitical entities within the Achaemenid Empire. In the case of the Assyrians in particular, Achaemenid records show Assyrians holding important positions within the empire, particularly with regards to military and civil administration. The terms Chaldi and Chaldean were henceforth found in Hebraic and Biblical sources dating from the 6th and 5th centuries BCE, and referring specifically to the period of the Chaldean dynasty of Babylon. This absence of Chaldeans from the historical record continues throughout the Macedonian Empire, Seleucid Empire, Parthian Empire, Roman Empire, Sassanid Empire, Byzantine Empire and after the Arab Islamic conquest and Mongol Empire. The term Chaldean was still in use at the time of Cicero long after the Chaldeans had disappeared, who in one of his speeches mentions Chaldean astrologers, and speaks of them more than once in his De Divinationi. Other classical Latin writers who speak of them as distinguished for their knowledge of astronomy and astrology are Pliny the Elder, Valerius Maximus, Aulus Gellius, Cato the Elder, Lucretius, and Juvenal. Horace in his Carpe Diem Ode speaks of the Babylonian calculations, the horoscopes of astrologers consulted regarding the future. In the late antiquity, a variant of Aramaic language that was used in some books of the Bible was misnamed as Chaldean by Jerome of Stridon. That inaccurate usage continued down the centuries in Western Europe, and it was still customary during the 19th century, until the misnomer was corrected by scholars. In West Asian, Greek and Hebraic sources however the term for the language spoken in Mesopotamia was commonly Assyrian and later also Syriac accordingly. In the earliest recorded Western mentions of the Christians of what is now Iraq and nearby countries the term is used with reference to their language. In 1221, Jacques de Vitry wrote that they denied that Mary was the mother of God and claimed that Christ existed in two persons. They consecrated leavened bread and used the Chaldean language. In the 15th century the term Chaldeans was first applied specifically to Assyrians living in Cyprus who entered a short-lived union with Rome, and no longer merely with reference to their language but the name of a new church. The common ethnic term for the Aramaic-speaking inhabitants of northern Mesopotamia used by the people themselves in their Persian, Armenian, Arab, Greek, Georgian and Kurdish neighbors both before and after the advent of Christianity in Iraq. Northeast Syria, Southeast Turkey and Northwest Iran however was always Assyrian and later also Syrian, a later derivation of Assyrian, the Assyrian continuity in these regions being well-documented media related to Chaldea at Wikimedia Commons. Thanks for watching.